and in a new section, Jamie's here to talk to you about a very old game called Pandemonium. Hello. Pandemonium is a game developed by a company known as Toys for Bob. And Interesting name. Yeah. Toys for Bob? Yes. <laughs> Who's Bob? Uh, I don't know. What, 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 what kind of toys? Yeah, Toys for uh, Bob could be a very <laughs> strange company. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually uh, the same company that made yeah. Oh, with the return of Tits Lights Go on the Fall. <laughs> so I'd bring it back, you know. Yeah. It's also published by Crystal Diamond. And it was originally made for PlayStation 1 in 1996. And PlayStation 1 game? Yes. Yeah, well, that was. We were three when that came out. <laughs> yes. That's okay. And the Sega Saturn in 1997. And I actually remember playing this game when I first got my PS1 in 98. And um, obviously the video that I'll be playing on the YouTube bit is me playing it. The Age of 19 on a PC version that was originally released in 97. But mine, the one I was playing, was revamped by the wonderful people over at GOG.com. GOG. Yeah. Good old things. Oh, really? <laughs> or GOG. GOG. <laughs> yes, GOG.com. <laughs> and um, basically they improve the graphics, but keep with the old style. Basically it means that my uh, screen doesn't like over-exaggerate all of the pixels. And... So um, they don't exaggerate the pixels so it doesn't look like everyone's in a crime reconstruction. Where they yeah. blow out the faces. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> So basically it makes it actually playable on yeah. a big screen. And um, it also does the audio a bit so that a good speaker can actually play further can actually play. Sorry, was that actually what you said or was that just the bad audio of the people that's been talking? <laughs> <laughs> that was just because these are terrible speakers. That yeah, you've got really bad speakers using. if you're listening. Yeah. Yeah. He actually said a really clear sentence. Yeah. It was crystal clear, 1080p. <laughs> Even though he can't get 1080p in sound. But yeah, <laughs> It was actually the meaning of life. Yeah, yeah. that's we, what he said. <laughs> in, in, we are so spiritually enriched by what this man has said. <laughs> I think I'm going to start following his religion. <laughs> Speak on, yeah. dear saviour. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Speak on, dear saviour. I didn't even say that to Jesus. <laughs> they said, oh, get well soon. <laughs> Essentially, it's the same game, but they've made it compatible with a more modern PC and they've made it more enjoyable to play on a more modern PC. Um, Pandemonium is what's known as a 2.5D platformer. 2.5? I don't know what a 2D platformer is, I don't know what a 2.5D is. <laughs> you vaguely quoting Venter. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the game renders in 3D. If you don't know what 3D is, you really have to get examined. But if you don't know what 3D is, you actually do literally need to get examined. Yeah. Like your eyes <laughs> need to get examined. Yeah. But you play it like a standard 2D platformer game. Yeah. And except the world sort of can rotate and the camera angle uh, changes and right. things. So you can take different paths and find lots of hidden areas and stuff. But the only way to actually avoid enemies is to jump over them or kill them. Yeah. It's a lot like, so, a bit like, kind like of Paper Mario. Like, yeah, a bit like Paper Mario or yeah. Sonic or something like that. Yeah, I was thinking Crash Bandicoot kind of, because that was a bit sort of almost 3D. Yeah. Uh, the PS1 games. Yeah, it's a bit like that, but imagine if you can't go from like side to side as yeah. you're following the track. Yeah. And Excuse me. <laughs> and actually, it is a lot like Mario games because you actually have to jump on them. Ah. to kill the enemies and things, right. uh, but you Excuse can me. also shoot them with magic and kick them in the face. Yay! <laughs> um, there's two characters. One's a young girl who used to be an acrobat called Nikki, and the second is a court jester called Faragus with a puppet on the end of a stick. 
Good to see. Um, it starts off with Nikki casting fireworks spells, but she ends up casting a spell which makes this big demon dog pig fish bird thing. So, sorry, <laughs> run that by me one more time! <laughs> She's like casting fireworks spells up in the air, mm-hmm. and Fargus is going like, "Oh, come on, do a bigger one, do a bigger one." But then she casts the wrong spell, and it ends up making this sort of demon dog pig fish bird thing. Yeah, yeah I'm still Sarah not quite Palin getting it. And <laughs> Sarah Palin. Yeah, Sarah Palin <laughs> appears above the city, and uh, this is something vaguely like this is something vaguely like the Olympic opening ceremony. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Did I miss something? Was there a giant Sarah <laughs> Palin? <laughs> but this sort of dog pig fish bird thing eats the whole city in one sort of tunnel making fight thing. And basically the whole point of the game is to fix this. Right. But even though there's probably a half decent spell that Nikki could cast and just fix everything, she's a pretty shit sorceress, really, as, as proven by what she's just done. They're trying to make a firework and create a giant yeah. demon. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they have to find what's called the wishing engine, where you can just wish the whole city back into existence. Both characters can shoot magic at the enemies with a, like, power, I think, and only Fargus can kick them in the head. I don't know why only Fargus come in the head. The game actually doesn't explain a thing. You're just sort of thrown into this world and expect to, to know how to play. Right. Um, both characters do have special moves. Nikki can do the double jump, and Fargus can do the spinning kick thing to kick the ball it, it, it makes sense for the sorceress to do the double jump, as seeing as it does break the laws of physics to jump in the yeah. air. And, and the fact that she again. was yeah. an acrobatic and he's a court jester. Yeah. <laughs> but so when's, the, when's it set? When's it set? Um, it sort of splits because some parts are set in like very medieval times. Some parts are set just in a wood. Um, <laughs> some parts are set in like a desert and they've got like dinosaurs and things like that. Hang on, right, hang on. Sorry. The same characters yeah. that are in the medieval age and then suddenly also in, have dinosaurs. They're suddenly yes. in a desert with yes. dinosaurs. And the wishing engine type thing is in a sort of six year old's version of Christian Heaven. Like <laughs> up in the clouds type thing. So you actually play on the clouds and stuff. <laughs> this is like beyond Scientology weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I was but, about to say, don't offend the Scientologists, but yeah, fuck you, Scientologists. Yeah, the Scientologists. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, they've offended themselves. <laughs> but there's no control options, nothing like that. No tutorial, no button to I tell hate, you. I hate games that don't have tutorials. Yeah, the, mm. it doesn't tell you what button to press whatsoever in any situation. Like, the only thing it actually tells you is when you start off in the uh, sort of um, level select thing. It tells you enter to enter level, okay, and I think it's Z or X to switch character. That's it. So, do you do what I've known, become known as a Smash Brothers syndrome, where you essentially just mash all the buttons? <laughs> no, <laughs> because if you start to mash all the buttons, your character stands still. As you go through the level, you collect little things. There's treasure, which is basically just coins, um, power-ups, health, lives, and actually if you get enough um, treasure, there's it just gives you an extra life. Right. Um, power-ups can give you more treasure, um, better or alternative magic. You can actually like turn into a rhino at some stages and just like charge through the level <laughs> and that's the point where like if an enemy appears in front of you you can just hit it and it just dies. Yeah. So um, you can and it. Yeah. 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 Um, generally the actual gameplay feels quite retro. The hitboxes are sort of not quite the same size as the enemies are displayed. What's a hitbox? Um, a hitbox is like if 
you have like a person and their head might be a hitbox, but it will be like a circle sphere type thing the size of the head. So that if you shoot their head, it'll come up with headshot. But in the older games, they actually used to just put a box, like a cube type thing around the character. So if you hit anywhere in the cube, then you hit the character. Yeah, so you could actually oh, so miss. You could hit them like there. Yeah, you could hit like here and it would still count. Right. But they could also walk into you like above their shoulder, away from their head, and it would count as an attack. Ju there, ju though. Just to let you know, listeners, when they go, like, over here... Yeah, no, we're pointing, sorry. like, not on our body, but close to. Just, yeah. just to let you know. Yeah, sorry, I should have thought about that. <laughs> if I was a proper broadcaster, I would have thought of that, yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they're sort of bigger than they should be in some places. Sometimes you can kill a monster, sort of, as you're jumping up, rather than when you're landing down on them. Right. And sometimes you can be in quite a seemingly safe place. Like the monster can be up on a ledge and you down below. And it just walks along to the edge of the ledge and you die. Because <laughs> it hit you from all the way up there. <laughs> but just touching you makes it like a... Yeah, if it touches you, then it knocks off a heart. That that, um, that um, happens quite a lot in Nova games. Yeah, yeah. I, re I remember that. Happening. It's a bit. It's a lot yeah. like Mario in that. Yeah, like remember, if you walk yeah. into a turtle, it does damage to you. But if you jump on the turtle, it's fine. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Even though the turtles had spikes on the backs. Yeah. It was like surely <laughs> yeah. jumping off. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the damage yeah. instead yeah. of walking into your shin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You just oh, kick it. Mario. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Jumping on it is more painful than yeah. kicking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's got really simple to use key bindings for the PC. Like it's just the arrow keys to move. It doesn't even use the W A X D. Yeah. It's actually just the arrow keys and space bars to jump and left control, which is in the right control in between the arrows and the spaces to do special attacks or whatever. Right. There's only one special attack for the character. Um, Fargo does the spinning jump, spinning kick thing, which is one button. But if you collect a power up, you can shoot magic. Both characters shoot magic. Right. So it's like right. two, two special attacks. But two yeah. special attacks for Fargo, but uh, Nikki, the acrobat girl, can only do one special attack, but can double jump. So if an enemy's really up high, she doesn't have to like go all the way to one side and then all the way back to the yeah. other. She can just double jump, or she can just double jump over it and just like. Right. So rather than saying like special attacks, each character has two special moves. Yeah, special moves. Yeah. Um, they actually also have um these sort of old style bonus levels or hidden levels and things like that. And uh, Crash, like Crash had so many yeah. of those. Yeah. Like you could just walk along and find like a hole. It looks like a well <laughs> type thing. And you can just jump down it and there's a room in there with like a little mini game and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You just find a small platform with a question mark on it. Yes! yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but also if you collect enough treasure, I think it's something like eighty percent of all the treasure in the level mm. or something like that then you get sent to a bonus level, which is just like a high speed, collect as much treasure as you can before you die. But if you die, you it doesn't matter. Like, you don't actually lose any yeah. life. They had this similar thing um, that they brought back in uh, X-Men Legends 2, mm. and where it, it was, you had to collect um, in each sort of, it wasn't like level, but like, they had sort of levels within Level to uh, in each sort of segment where you had a different base camp for each yeah. segment, bit. And it, it, for each group of levels you had in a base camp, you had to collect four. Uh, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and for every base camp bit, if you collect four, four of them, you got access to a secret, a secret level. Mm -hmm. If you went in at the secret level, you beat all of the characters in that. Um, and collected a bit of armor at the end, and if you did all of it, it all of the if you collected all of the armor, and all of the secret levels, and collected all of the secret levels, and collected all of the secret levels, and every single every single section, uh, in the end you were not Iron Man as a playable character in the end. Mm. So you play as Iron Man, which is uh, in an X Men game, which is really weird yeah. because he's not an X Man yeah. character. He's not never really been a video 
with X Men. Yeah. It was a really good uh, idea. The same thing in X Men. Uh, sorry, in Marvel in Alliance. The same thing. Yeah. Uh, Daredevil. You get the same thing again. Um, when you finish a level in Panda the game doesn't. We end. don't actually mention the name of the <laughs> game since it's been for a while. <laughs> yeah. We all just got for a long, talk, long time. We just talk, we thought we were talking about Pokemon Blue for ages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you finish the game in Pantabernia, <laughs> um, you finish the level even. There's. It doesn't save your progress. Right. Um, there's a checkpoint system within the levels, so if you die in sort of the second stage, you'll start the second stage of the level again. Yeah. But it never actually like has a save option, so if you get to like level 8 or whatever in one run, and then you leave the game, when you start it up again, you'll start at level 0. Yeah. Oh, did, did yeah. they have a system uh, before that game where they gave like a code? And yeah, mm -hmm. that's what this uses. It uses a password yeah. section. And I love the fact that it uses the password section because that just opens up so many different things. Like, if you want to use it as like a rogue game, do you know what a rogue game is? It's one life. If you die, you die. Right. Uh, that's a rogue game. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can play it like that, and it's just that, basically, you can play it like that if you don't have a pencil and paper. <laughs> like, then it's a rogue game. But it also, like, if somebody else got to level 16 and with five parts of life, and you got to level 16 with three or something like that, you could steal their code, and you would have extra life or something. And you could yeah. go online and find which ones would so give you... It's the earliest version of cheat codes. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, it... Cheat codes were the yeah. main reason Like, you I could enter games. it in and you could start it, opened up every level you could play with full health, full magic attack, and, like, there's some that you have, like, you, so that you always play as a rhino, so you can just charge <laughs> through each level and just kill everything. Yeah. Or there's some where you could have literally one hit and you're dead yeah. type thing and you start at level zero. Like there were, there were really good cheat codes for the Spider Man games in PS1. Yeah. Like uh, I remember that the, like some of them were just fun, like the the what if cheats uh, and some of them were like um, unlimited fire way because I remember in uh, this the original Spider Man game on PS1, uh, the symbiotes were uh, like an evil character in it and you had yeah. to beat them in. And, and you could only kill them using sonic power or fire, so you could have fire webbing where you shoot like fireballs <laughs> instead yeah. of webs, and you'd beat them up with that and you'd destroy them. Yeah. It got unlimited that and stuff like that. And unlimited, un unlimited invisibility, in, so you could just walk through levels without being, uh, without any of the bad, yeah. like the thugs seeing you. So you just got got away with like having to hit anyone. You just walk yeah. through the entire level without being seen. Yeah. I don't know why I can't remember what this game was, but one of the characters had the power of invisibility, and it, had, it was basically a kind of like Pokemon games where you'd walk around to get chat to people, yeah. and and every so often like you know a wild such and such appears. <laughs> and, a wild, wild Snorlax appears. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and then you have to do a, a fight. Wild yeah. Oddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, what you could do is you could play as this character and be invisible the entire thing. <laughs> so that literally all the game would be with you going around talking to people. But then by the boss the Yeah, but then yeah, but then the by the boss fight at the end you couldn't miss the boss fight. But that's like the very end of the game, where you gained no experience. Yeah. So you couldn't, it was physically impossible <laughs> to beat the boss. Yeah. I'm sure somebody somewhere could have done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say about Pandemonium? Uh, um, there's not much more I want to say about the Pandemonium game. Except that it's particularly cheap on GOG.com, it's very easy to use. Um, actually, I think I'll do a game giveaway type of thing. So, whoever emails me, well, emails, clearly, I do not email.com, I will give them 
a copy of this game. The first Ooh. person to be yeah, the first person to be there, I'll give them a copy of this game and they can play it. And the YouTube YouTubers that have been watching should have been able to watch some gameplay so they can see if they actually want to play the game. Yeah. <laughs> if you've not been watching on YouTube, go and go watch to YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most apart from that, so there's not much I want to say. So that's your uh, first installment of uh, Jamie's game section of the vlogcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look forward to further episodes in, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and stay tuned and listen to uh, Jordan's episodes as well, which are entitled kind of Nerd Watching, and as well as mine, which are uh, various. Rants. Rants or, and standard comedy, yeah. comedy songs, etc. Still haven't came up for a name for his. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> I think kind of, it's easier without a name. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of random. Jade shit is what it'll be called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. Just gotta remember the apostrophe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> Anyway, yes. <laughs> it's now 2020 before I can have another decent <laughs> joke. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. Bye, Floodites. Bye. You Bye. Bye. <laughs> You're a dick. <laughs> <laughs>